Hello and welcome. Today we are looking at the SIM2 XT175 Ferry Air Camera Drone. This is a small brushless quadcopter with optical flow. It has GPS. It has a tiltable 1080p HD camera with 8 megapixels. It has FPV streaming, follow me, waypoints, and plenty of other neat features. So let's check it out. Now the drone comes in this small square plain white box and uh, there's really not much going on in terms of uh, images or design. It's just a simple plain box here with uh, not much on the sides and right here on the box there's just a sticker with some information. Right there it says 18 plus and um, that's about it really. Here in the front it just says fairy air camera. So a very simple minimalistic design so now let's open up the box and see what's inside here let's just lift off the uh, top portion here and right away you can see the drone and its uh, proprietary charger with its micro USB cable so now let's pull out the drone here so you can see it's uh, red and folded in there bottom view of the drone so very nice very sleek and compact and it's very easy to fold out as you can see you can start in any direction very cool looking here so let's set it here to the side and here's the proprietary charger and its micro USB cable as you can see there and you just simply plug in the uh, micro USB cable right there on the side in its port so we'll set that down right there. Now let's look at the second portion of the box here. Here we have a little bag with the instruction manual and brochures. And it has a little Allen wrench right there in the bag. And here is the small transmitter, as you can see. And there's really no batteries there. You just charge it at the bottom. And here at the top is its a fold-out clip there that you can insert a mobile device or cell phone so very nice sleek looking transmitter and that's essentially it not much going on there so now let's uh, organize all this and take one last look at the contents of the box now taking a last look at the contents of the box we have the drone itself it's 7.6 volt 970 milliamp lipo battery its charger which has a proprietary adapter and micro USB cable to charge the battery we have the transmitter and we have the instruction manuals with an Allen wrench so that's essentially the contents of the box now let's take a closer look at the drone now taking a closer look at the drone this is a very cool looking drone as you can see it's a small red compact folding drone that has brushless motors and a 1080p camera there in the front. And it's really easy to fold in. You can either start out with the rear legs followed by the front or the front leg followed by the rear. It makes no difference as long as you align the propellers. And it looks very sleek there when it's all folded in. Right here on the bottom you can see it's optical flow camera and battery. And it's also very easy to fold out. You can also fold it out in any direction, whether it be the front legs or rear. And right here in the front is its 8 megapixel 1080p camera. That is tiltable, close to 90 degrees. But it has to be manually tilted prior to takeoff. Um, it is not remote tilting through the transmitter. Right here is the optical flow camera that is mainly used for optical flow positioning not for photos here is a little micro USB port that doesn't seem to be utilized either for firmware updates or battery charging and right here is its on off button and you just simply keep it pressed to uh, turn it on and you can see that there are really no lights around the legs there's just this main light here in the back flashing blue light there are no lights in the front or anything like that so not too well lit for orientation or for night flying uh, no lights there at the bottom or anything but um, a bright blue light there in the back and you just simply keep it pressed there to 
turn off the uh, power and um, let's take a closer look here at the battery this is a 7.6 volt 970 milliamp lipo battery and uh, it does take uh, about an hour to charge it maybe 90 minutes and it does uh, charge through the uh, proprietary charger that has an adapter here so you just simply you know latch it in there to the uh, connectors and uh, just plug in the micro USB cable right here in the port and um, just simply charge it there is a small light on the uh, adapter that shows that it's charging right there and uh, as mentioned it takes about an hour or so to charge and provides the quadcopter with around a uh, 16 minute flight time which is fairly good and you just simply snap it right back into place right there at the bottom so overall a very cool looking uh, quadcopter there with uh, brushless motors and uh, propellers that are foldable and in two parts right here is its uh, micro SD card slot so you would just simply pop one in and slide it back in there and so it does record the uh, footage directly to that which is very good so you don't get uh, any streamed or skipped frames or low frame rate and so that's about it so now let's take a closer look at the transmitter now taking a closer look at the transmitter this is a small comfortable transmitter that is similar to other sim 2 transmitters it doesn't take any batteries in the back it just simply charges right down below through a uh, micro USB charge cable and it has a built-in battery and uh, going over the controls we have the left throttle stick and right rudder stick we have the on off switch there in the center that uh, turns on and off the transmitter we have the um, lock button there the return to home button right there in the center and right here on the right is the landing button and you keep that press for a couple seconds and then press the uh, lock button and five seconds the uh, motors should turn on in idle right here on the right is a spinning wheel that doesn't seem to be used by this quadcopter but may be used by other sim 2 drones that use this controller like the sim 2 moment and right here on the top is the um, mobile device mount or clip that can hold a very large mobile device but not quite a tablet so overall a good small compact comfortable controller that doesn't take batteries and it does provide the quadcopter with around 100 to 150 meters worth of control range and so that's essentially it so now let's take a closer look at setting the quadcopter up for its first flight now setting the drone up for its first flight is very straightforward once you have a fully charged battery inserted into the drone along with an SD card and have fully charged the transmitter you would first start out by turning on the drone right here and pushing its on off button and keeping it pressed until it turns on then you would turn on the transmitter right there and it should be bound automatically um, a good recommended first step is to calibrate the gyros while on a flat surface you would push both sticks down and out like so and that should uh, calibrate the gyros interestingly enough there's no compass calibration process noted or referenced anywhere but to turn on the motors in idle you would long press the uh, landing button there to hear a beep then press the lock button and then wait a couple of seconds and the motor should turn on in idle and uh, that's essentially it so now let's connect to the quadcopter using the app now once in your mobile device's Wi-Fi settings you want to look for an entry that says XT175 and it'll have a serial number and initially there is a default password and the password is basically one through zero and so you would connect to that and once connected to the drone you want to look for and launch this app right here which is the ferry aircam app and that's in the iOS and Android app stores ferry and uh, once you have that you would just simply launch it and you will be greeted with this screen right here that says ferry and um, 
initially right here on the upper right corner there is some help documentation on using the app that you can navigate through and you could also view your uh, photo gallery where you have your stored photos and videos and right here on the lower left there's a little option to uh, download offline maps and right down below that you have the uh, choice of frequency either 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 and so you could pick whether you have 5g wi-fi or not but we'll start out here in the center and you have two options whether you you use the phone for control or just for FPV so we'll start out with this option right here so now we have a live feed with the quadcopter but going over some of the controls here on the lower left corner we have different control types such as the traditional left throttle stick and right rudder stick we have button controls here where we can push buttons to fly in certain directions and last but not least, we have the accelerometer mode of flying where we can tilt the phone in a direction we'd like to fly the quadcopter. And then this button activates the map mode where we can set our waypoints. And then we push here to draw our waypoints and options to fly those uh, waypoints. And then right here in the lower right corner, we can access our photo gallery once again. And we can switch between viewing photos and videos that have been saved from previous flights. Here we can switch between photo and video mode, whether we're taking pictures or video with this button here in the center. And on the sides we have our takeoff and land buttons. Right here at the top we have our telemetry, such as number of satellites and height and distance. Here we have our settings, such as joystick settings or mode that we like to set it. We also have here... Um, uh, camera settings such as burst or single shot uh, calibration settings to calibrate the gyros but not the uh, GPS compass for some reason and then right here we have sensitivity settings for uh, speed and rates and so those are essentially the um, main setting categories that we can navigate through and uh, do all the sorts of calibrations and adjustments that are necessary and going back to the uh, main screen once again we can now access the um, controller mode where the quadcopter is controlled by the controller and now we have um, follow me mode and um, we have all these um, other settings here but primarily it's used for FPV and um, the quadcopter has a pretty good FPV range of about 80 to 100 meters and uh, as you can see it has uh, pretty good latency and uh, clarity right there so um, pretty good uh, FPV and uh, quality here with the camera so overall it's a uh, smooth reliable flyer and uh, has a good optical flow positioning GPS and uh, has plenty of features for a good competitive price so now let's uh, take it for a flight and see how she performs